Hello everybody, um, I wanted to talk tonight about, um, this is perhaps the most important conversation that I've ever had in my lifetime, um, it took uh, a lot of, it, it's just unbelievable how important um, this conversation is, um, and I, I just, um, I, I don't even have the words to explain um, how unbelievably uh, helpful this is going to be to anyone that is even paying even slight attention to uh, what's going on here uh, in Oceana. Um, so this is perhaps the most active uh, region in the on the on the entire planet, um, really for earthquakes, um, and it's just very very active. Um, I've seen a recent. Uh, 6.0 um, and just some others that have really just shook everything in the building um, almost to the ground um, there gets to be 6.0 and then there's 7.0 which is 10 times that and then there's 8.0 which is 10 times the 7.0 and then there's 9.0 which is 10 times that other previous so there's huge amounts of energy um, in this whole region um, of Southeast Asia um, and the water is very warm um, because it's right near the equator the equator is actually easy way to remember where the equator is is it runs right through Singapore um, and Singapore is just this tip um, right here um, so I want to start by just going through everything really quickly uh, I found uh, it really helps people to just see everything at once um, just to kind of, even though it can be a little bit confusing, um, but again, uh, if you're uh, if you're studying this, um, it's probably going to change everything in your entire life. This is going to change everything about uh, how we understand the planet, um, and particularly um, uh, Oceania region. So I'm gonna just go through this really quickly. So I started with this diagram. Um, it was really helpful to see the mountains. Uh, particularly because it's such a earthquake active region um, you can also start to see some of the rivers here um, that are particularly important and I probably will need to re-outline some details here uh, based on the river and we'll do that uh, during this discussion uh, so you can see just how important uh, Thailand is in particular uh, Borneo um, and then also this whole area of Sumatra and really India the uh, vastness of all this uh, water pollution that really comes out uh, through here and also Myanmar. So we're going to dive into all those details. Here's kind of a more of a general map um, that you can see. Um, what really uh, made sense to me is looking at how the earthquakes um, can be used to guide uh, where the fish uh, and wildlife um, may actually uh want to be so in this map it looks really complicated um, but you can kind of simplify it down to two main paths you basically have a path along uh, the coastline here uh, and then you also have a path uh, that goes deeper into the ocean it even goes out uh, deep uh, beyond uh, our imagination into the Pacific Ocean out towards that way um, you can kind of start to see uh, this triangular region here um, but basically uh, there's a lot of different details here that I got into um, as I studied this for um, you know I've been working on this for years really um, and um, just diving into some of the details uh, that's going on so uh, there's just so much going on this is a soil map um, what I found is that um, some of the most important wildlife so basically what I'm trying to do here is combine uh, our knowledge of the land uh, and the ocean and basically see uh, that bridge area between where the wildlife um, on land meets the ocean and how we can better understand that so uh, here um, this is the geology and you can also see different types of rock um, can also mean different types of wildlife so I tried to outline some interesting paths here um, kind of based on the geology of how the earth is moving um, and uh, you can see um, some details here and we'll try to go into all the details if we can um, this actually was surprisingly helpful um, because it's the electrical map um, and what I found here is that we can actually use um, the electricity lines um, to start um, using some of that electrical energy to clean up the water um, as well as understand 
where the major problems uh, in the future might be because there's just so much population uh, moving into these rural islands um, and the electrical lines can definitely guide us um, very carefully about how um, we can do this. Um, one thing I really realized that I wanted to emphasize is that a prench essentially probably um, a lot of the life came from land um, so it's really important to think about Vietnam if you are in Vietnam um, actually the problem for humanity starts um, really with Vietnam and Thailand and Myanmar as well as Singapore down here so um, these areas are really hot spots uh, to consider because before we even get out into the deep ocean and this is thousands of miles out into the ocean um, it really starts um, really with Vietnam um, to think about. Um, so all these little areas um, were very important to think about and you can see I highlighted that. And then just the population pressure in India, you can't even see it here, um, but really this is such a major drainage area and it really affects the water hundreds or even thousands of miles out into the ocean um, as well as <clears throat> Yangon here and Bangkok especially. So you can start to see um, and then the population pressure from Hong Kong responsibility there and then also you can see Manila so um, but it's really I didn't even I couldn't even circle how important Java is in Indonesia um, but really they're planning on moving the all of these people to this island or a significant percentage because they're gonna move the capital uh, to Borneo so that would really radically change the population structure for all of Southeast Asia um, and it's really scary because um, this is really the only island uh, and the only major wildlife left um, here. Um, and if this goes, um, if uh, Indonesia is starting, you can start to see the population coming in here um, from the capital movements. This really surprised me how important this map was, um, the forestry map. Uh, it really shocked me how important India was. I just all of a sudden realized, wow, India is really deforested. Um, and then the problem really goes back to Myanmar and and also Thailand and specifically I didn't even I, I don't even know how to explain how important this is but I'm gonna re-add that right now um, just because it's so important around Sumatra so you can see um, this is gonna be a different color but it's just wow is it important um, this island um, the deforestation here and then as well as here it's just hard to explain when this island goes um, it's basically completely done for all of this area um, so it's really hard to explain but India needs to bear a huge amount of responsibility for the deforestation uh, in Southeast Asia as well as Thailand and Myanmar so um, but it doesn't really even explain how important um, Philippines are they've completely almost deforested everything uh, in there so it's just a hugely important discussion topic forestry map really helped me a lot um, here's another soil map and you can start to see if I were to move this soil map up to uh, Shanghai and Beijing you can see that they've tried to farm these regions of the flood zones this is the richest soil and really that's where it dumps into the ocean the most so we can really use this as guides and you start to see how important uh, India is in the original problem of uh, po water pollution um, because really uh, Really, Bangkok had that problem originally, and also down here uh, in Vietnam, um, they really kind of started that um, deep sea problem. But it, even before that, it was Myanmar, and even before that, it was Calcutta. Um, and you can even see some other coastal areas here um, that are very important, far away from the region. Um, but those are such large, vast areas of uh, swampland that it's really important to think about that. Um, if you look at the satellite map, um, you can see um, how far you can see some of that water pollution right on the water here but it actually goes hundreds or even a thousand miles out of the ocean so um, and here you can start to see um, and I just I don't know you know how to explain it to everybody right now but this whole region is just so vital um, I just couldn't even explain how important it is um, and it's just hard to see on that map um, so I'm gonna pause this I'm gonna go through this one more time really quickly um, just to highlight uh, some details here uh, but again you can see um, just the uh, variety of mountains and hills uh, particularly in um, the Philippines right um, so you see that there's just and that means you can have all kinds of wildlife and then you're also gonna have these close islands which makes it really fun for the fish to swim around and so the Philippines I don't know I'm gonna even highlight it again but I'm just gonna blast it here with everything just so you can see it's just so important here 
uh, to think about how important that is. And I'm sorry I draw that really quickly. I'm just so, um, I, I, I don't even know how to explain it, how important the Philippines is. But really it also goes into different levels of fish, right? Because you have depths here in the ocean um, and you basically have a deeper ocean here. Um, so there's different types of fish. And then these pathways here that I tried to highlight in blue, you can kind of see these are kind of the pathways that the fish uh, most likely travel um, and it really shows between um, here you can see um, up in uh, Taiwan and Philippines there's a pathway here um, you can also see a deep sea pathway heading out to Guam um, and then just all the details in here of these pathways um, that the fish definitely need to travel and it's really starts um, the problem really starts down here in Java so if you look at the population um, you'll see that um, pretty clearly um, that Java is pretty important um, and here you can kind of see um, these different regions uh, even out into India how they're perhaps even connected um, so some of these yellow zones help you understand um, how these deeper sea areas might be connected to the extremely deep sea areas which are in dark black here um, so you kind of have uh, medium sea and then extremely deep water um, and actually Japan on this map you can start to see it actually goes all the way up along the coastline and Japan is actually extremely important uh, fishing zone um, just because it's got so many islands so even before you get to the Philippines uh, up here in Japan and also in the Yellow Sea it's almost completely outfished um, there's just so many fishing boats I'll try to show that um, later but it's basically been entirely fished um, so again you can see these two major pathways kind of an inland road outside road and then a deep sea area as well as some of these yellow zones and then I had this green zone all being along the coast and I probably should have highlighted that but it's really kind of a different green uh, along India um, here and there's really vital stuff uh, particularly right in here between Sri Lanka and I really should highlight that as a red area um, just to make sure that people really understand um, that they can make a huge impact um, in some of these areas um, and then here's this one and this one and then Shanghai and then excuse me Hong Kong and then Shanghai you can see um, there's actually this huge zone right along here it's just everything is important so it's really hard to say um, where the where the where the details are so uh, but you can see I'm trying to go through this as fast as possible because uh, there's just such a need uh, to start working on these problems immediately so again, um, here's kind of the um, soil map, um, and you can see uh, just how vital Cambodia, Vietnam, and you really have to combine that. Uh, let me do this with the geological map. So you can see if you do these two really carefully next to each other, you can see the soil and the geological maps actually line up pretty good, and there's different types of wildlife, but there's certain paths that you can see like deep in here that we really need to monitor carefully, as well as in Sumatra. You can see all those river systems going pretty deep inland, um, and just this whole pathway, I couldn't, it just, this used to be a major pathway for fish, um, and they've kind of had to go through here now, um, so it's kind of changed, and I probably should put this as a red zone right there. Um, or even highlight it. Um, it was just hard to even explain how vital uh, that point is there. But really going back to this as I'm kind of avoiding the major topics is really in the Philippines. Um, you can see um, that basically a lot of the deep sea fish may actually depend on little areas, um, for example in here and in here, um, just before they breeding in these smaller island areas and then going out to deeper sea fish. Um, a lot of people may want to eat um, I don't, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't even want to talk about it, but, and you can just see how some of these areas over here in Papua New Guinea, the swamp zones, uh, can be very vital for wildlife, and then heading deep out in the ocean, so this whole side here, as well as this side, it's just extremely important island, um, details, um, you can see, uh, it's almost twice or three times the amount of stuff that we see here in Thailand, um, but not to mention that how important Thailand is, um, on that whole discussion, so, and you can see here, um, I try to make this more of a pathway map, um, and it really got confusing quickly because I started to realize how important the geology was. Uh, but what you really see here is this major pathway down through here in Malaysia. This is considered one of the most wildlife regions on the planet. Um, they have elephants here. Um, they have all kinds of monkeys. A lot of them have been um, completely 
completely, um, I mean, zooed or they're just not even wild at all. So a lot of that has moved to Sumatra here and even Sumatra, if you looked at the population map, you could see, uh, and now even Borneo is going to be threatened because of Jakarta moving the capital uh, over here. So that's a scary concept, but really um, it just doesn't even start to explain how important um, this whole region is. And I'm kind of avoiding the topic because uh, it's just so important um, to uh, protect the area. Um, and here again, you can see I kind of circled uh, some of these areas. So if you're interested in kind of the uh, electronics side and protecting uh, what we can do uh, to work with certain cities, particularly Singapore, because it's so deep uh, in here. It's basically the largest city furthest. Uh, Jakarta technically is and Java, um, but uh, really it should, should have stopped a lot of the development should have probably stopped even way before all of this but Singapore because it's such an it's an island uh, and because of many other reasons hold on a second so if you're sitting here watching this I'm trying to um, really emphasize these this has never been studied in this much detail ever in our history and you've just looked at stuff that probably no one very very few people on the planet have seen all of this information uh, within just such a short time time period um, this is so much information uh, that is just unbelievable the, the amount of uh, help that we can really uh, contribute to the wildlife um, here now that we see essentially almost everything um, geologically uh, from the soil maps from the electricity maps from the population maps um, and just uh, everything here so uh, I'm gonna pause this because it's just so much information um, and just take a step back and be like wow um, we can really start to understand what's going on here and we can really help out uh, significantly um, and there's just so many details uh, that I wanted to uh, particularly look at um, with you um, that are super exciting because we're gonna start to see how this is related to the rest of the planet the rest of the solar system to other planets uh, that we've never even uh, been on um, because this is actually probably connected uh, to the uh, really the vastness of our universe right um, some of these uh, shapes of these things uh, are probably connected uh, if you think about it we've been traveling around not only the solar system but the entire milky way uh, which is a vast galaxy uh, for billions of years um, and it took billions of years to create all of these islands uh, landforms um, and everything so it's really we're connected to the entire Milky Way and the Milky Way is connected to the entire universe so there's going to be some things here that are just going to be blow our minds about awesomeness um, and understanding particularly with the, how the wildlife may even be connected uh, to the rest of the universe um, and it's just unbelievably exciting um, to look at this i mean to have the opportunity for the first time in history um and i'm just so thankful and i'm really rushing this um because i really uh want to see some other ideas um and just way beyond what i'm looking at um and just kind of look at uh uh just how awesome uh the planet is and really the universe right so thanks so much i'll be right back in a little bit uh, so I wanted to mention something that's kind of like a, a super important side point is that uh, when I started studying uh, other parts of the world, uh, particularly the jungle, uh, the Amazon, and the Congo, I started to realize that earthquakes, uh, being able to listen to earth is super important, especially for the wildlife. Um, let me say that again because I said it almost too fast, is that if we can understand and listen to the earth, um, whether it's the wind, the breeze, the lightning storms, the clouds, whatever you're using to listen to the earth. I mean, I just walk down the street uh, and listen to the birds and things, uh, but the wildlife really does listen. Um, so it's really important to protect these areas that you see such complex uh, variety of earthquakes here um, because it, it's just, um, so important and not only is it unsafe for humans to live in um, and you see that basically during the near the equator it's almost too hot um, I tried to swim in the water down in Florida and I was just like this is too hot for me to even swim in um, but um, it's really just different um, area entirely so
So I'm trying to eat a late night dinner here um, because I've been just trying to work on this as much as possible um, just because I know how excited um, and unbelievable some of the details here. I wanted to highlight a particular detail, just zoom into something really extraordinary. This area here, this island, you can see on the forestry map, it started to highlight the problem um, on the forestry map. And I noticed that south parts here, if you combine that with the geological maps, you start to see where the key problems are um, because they've deforested it. So it's, they, it's actually, the problem starts on land and then goes into the ocean. So you can see Sumatra here, um, but particularly there's some new areas out into these islands that you start to see where they're doing some new deforestation, particularly on this spot here. And I highlighted that, tried to highlight that um, and then also even in Timor, like why is it that all the way out to here they have to deforest everything? So it's just, and then again, it really started all back in India. You can see the deforestation, almost complete deforestation, as well as Myanmar. And some of these areas back deep into here, I mean, this is the only forest you got left. Thailand has got, the reason this is not, this is forested is because it's high mountains. So one thing I haven't done <clears throat> is carefully gone through all the shipping and the boats. There's just so much of it um, <clears throat> in this area that it's hard to even comprehend. And I just wanted to give that opportunity mostly to people that wanted to get into the details. Um, <coughs> and what I wanted to mention is this marinetraffic.com place is really great. Uh, you can actually sort it by fishing vessels. Um, and I keep, I, I just don't know, there's some kind of mistake on, they changed it, I guess. Um, but, uh, <coughs> vessel filters, I think this is it here. So, uh, so yeah, so you can do it with fishing. Let's just go back and do, remove everything and then add it just with fishing. Um, so what you see here um, you have to actually go all the way up to Japan um, and you can start to see um, a lot of that fishing is coming down here from uh, the yellow essentially what's called the Yellow Sea Japan Taiwan and then it moves down through here to the Philippines uh, and then also um, and I think if we zoom in you can start to see even more significantly where the problems are so can you imagine all the fishing just going on along the coast here um, you can just see, and it gets to be ridiculous by the time you get up to China and Japan. Um, particularly Shanghai is hugely responsible, as well as Korea um, and Japan. And and probably originally Tokyo just outfished. You can see they're just fishing like crazy off of that one island here. Um, maybe regulations. Um, so, I mean, if you're going to fish everything along the, the coast, you got to you gotta be off the coast because the baby fish want to be right next to the coast. So that's one problem right there, but you can definitely see Vietnam is a huge factor in everything um, as well as it just, it just gets even more insane. So um, it's just, it's just really important to dive into the details if you have an opportunity on this marine traffic map. I highly recommend uh, looking at everything very carefully on this. So I wanted to talk briefly about the spiritual concepts here. Um, really, I wanted to open that up to everyone. I didn't want to talk about my personal spiritual concepts of how I perceive this spiritually because I really want to see so many different ideas um, out there. So, um, And there's also a paradox because uh, some of the smallest ideas are actually the foundation um, of everything spiritually. So. Although there's like this vastness of our planet that we're trying to study, um, there's just so many details um, that are unbelievably fun and awesome to look at. So I want to tell you one thing that may help you spiritually understand things here. Um, so for the longest time, uh, I really struggled as a engineer, as a mathematician, as a scientist, or uh, really just someone trying to understand the planet uh, logically. Um, I always felt like um, 
I needed a direct line between two points to kind of prove things. Um, and one thing I would say is that the way that one concept of how to think about things spiritually is that if you have an idea in your head, there's actual neurons that prove the existence of that idea. Um, and that's actually a pretty powerful concept spiritually because it means that there's a relationship between the logical world and the spiritual world that's unbelievably awesome and true, right? It basically proves that instincts are actually kind of correct um, as well as some spiritual ideas. So um, where did those ideas come from? It had to exist somewhere in the universe. Um, so um, try to track down whatever idea you have spiritually about the planet uh, and you'll find that there's probably going to be more and more truth uh, rather than going about the way of, well, I got to have all this logical proof, really start from the spiritual side um, and build spiritual evidence um, and the logic will actually fall in to place uh, a lot of times. Um, you can get caught sometimes spiritually, but um, honestly, I would say really um, we're kind of lacking uh, a lot of spiritual ideas. Sorry, everybody, I'm trying to get this information as quickly as possible to everybody. So um, I'm going to show you the images without my comments on them so that if you wanted to study these, you know, screenshot this or just pause the video or something, look at it carefully without any of my ideas, um, I'd like to give you that opportunity. So um, here is a three-dimensional view. Um, I'm going to post some of these links uh, and everything. Uh, I've already done that, actually. So. Um, here's this image and I can show you some other things. I want to move it around a little bit just to show you like what we're missing on some of this. So we're actually missing quite a bit off the coast of India here and there's a whole huge discussion on Africa. We, we, this is a small area um, but we're not even looking at Africa on this map here. So here you can start to see a three-dimensional perspective which is not exactly the same with the farmland. So you can start to see Sumatra here some other details um, that were hard to see on the original map. Here you can kind of see the last 30 days of earthquakes it goes out deep into the ocean. Um, and you can even start to see part of Africa and how um, important Madagascar is for Africa to start working on ocean, uh, uh, basically solving the problems in the ocean, as well as India can work really well, um, as well as Pakistan um, in these areas. So. Um, it really opens up the discussion and you can start to see it all, all the way goes up to the North Pole in Alaska um, and basically just the fish change quite a lot uh, as you move around uh, and then here's kind of this major region that you can see uh, I'm gonna pause this um, in a moment here um, give me a second one other thing I wanted to mention is that if you're trying to do an off-earth study it really helps uh, when you load these maps to do 3D smooth or 3D terrain um, because it starts to make it into a three-dimensional perspective. You can see how it's like warped. India looks warped here. Uh, this piece is on the edge. It does help to look at both maps. Um, the flat map also helps as well. I'll just load that again. And you can kind of see it's just a different India all of a sudden disappears and now you can kind of look at it more on a flat perspective. But it's really hard to see in this map just how important it is Taiwan is on this um, pathway here as well as heading out to Japan you know all the fish eventually um, yes uh, there's a lot more fish in the Philippines but everybody holds a key to the responsibility of what's happening uh, and then here you can see all this blue region uh, and actually China as we noticed was actually doing quite a lot more fishing uh, than India is doing uh, and that's partly just all this blue region is actually dumping into the ocean um, hugely responsible in the Yellow Sea uh, as well as Japan so there's a lot of things we didn't look at on the original map and you can just see here as you head out deeper and deeper into the ocean uh, these island chains become very important and then you can even get all the way down to the South Pole here with uh, New Zealand and uh, even heading down here into Tasmania um, and actually Australia plays a huge uh, factor you can see there's little rivers on here if you look at these little white areas that's actually showing rivers systems but it's nice to see both the rivers farmland you can see is kind of these red zones and you can uh, modify this uh, on the opacity here um, you can change uh, 
this is like the soil map so I can make it brighter or less brighter um, but it's nice to have that if you need um, so I just wanted to thank everybody uh, for really taking a look at this um, here's the earth at night you can kind of see um, how important Korea is particularly um, Hong Kong Shanghai Taiwan and Manila and then actually some hugely important uh, nighttime lights here um, one thing I forgot to mention in this discussion which I want to go back to is how important that peninsula is uh, in this whole discussion so really what's not apparent is this region right in here um, and Basically, there used to be, there's a lot of little islands all along the coast here of Malaysia. And it's no joke, uh, on the wildlife diversity maps, they show this area being very important. So, um, definitely pay attention on Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, and then even these new cities on the Sumatra side, as well as this tip city here. And there's just so much right in here. But, and it's just all the details. Really, if we were to do this whole discussion again... Uh, we look very carefully at the Philippines, every single island uh, we should look at carefully uh, to see what we can do, as well as this whole region right in here, and particularly seeing what we can do about that new transition from the capital of Jakarta being moved to uh, Borneo. So just what we can do there, as well as looking at details in Vietnam and Thailand. <laughs> um, and here you can see the electrical grid. Um, I was extremely surprised because really the money uh, that can help uh, start solve some of these problems really starts with the electrical grid um, and we can start to use that uh, some of the wealth uh, and the power really um, to help uh, improve the wildlife and then here's the main key population uh, questions um, and really <clears throat> let me go to that map just so we can start to look at India in particular um, and you can just see um, hugely important because it really started there um, and then as well as up here in Shanghai um, remember there's that whole flood region um, basically this was really outfished and then the fishing got pretty much devastated by the time it got to Vietnam so it looks like Vietnam really can do a lot uh, to improve their um, regulations for fishing as well as Philippines so it basically all comes down to Philippines and Indonesia at this point um, as well as Borneo and Sumatra so and the question is so important by the time you get out here it's just absolutely important uh, to make sure that the wildlife is safe and really um, people in uh, uh, a lot of people vacation in Bali uh, from Australia and Bali really is at that tip there and it's really this next island now uh, not just Bali but here uh, that really starts to become critical as well as this southern city here on uh, Sulawesi so uh, that's kind of a, a short version of how to look at it but Chennai here can definitely play a role as well as Calcutta and Yangon is hugely important as well so and then just oh, Ho Chi Minh City uh, there's so many details um, to really look at on that map so um, and then here is the forestry map if you wanted you can kind of see India basically completely devastated uh, in terms of forestry and we absolutely cannot let this happen uh, I mean basically what I see happening here uh, is trying to reforest every all these islands and then maybe if, if Jakarta is gonna move here and they're gonna completely deforest this island we have to reforest everything that Indonesia deforested so and that even includes Malaysia and Thailand so it's probably impossible for us to reforest this area because it's it's actually all farmland uh, as well as Cambodia so this area um, it's just very vital to work with Malaysia because Malaysia has an influence on Thailand um, and Sumatra and India out here why they've completely deforested their entire country um, it's very important to just look at details down in Chennai because really what's happening now is that Sri Lanka is doing the same thing that India did so why should Sri Lanka completely deforest everything uh, that's not a good plan so um, and it just basically all goes uh, back to this forestry map which is 
surprisingly helpful. Uh, and then here you can see the soil map really tells us about the variety of life. Uh, and we need to look at carefully these blue regions um, because that's where it starts to empty major amounts of dirt and uh, pollution and uh, just everything you can possibly imagine goes into the ocean at this point. Um, so we have to be careful about that. Uh, so again, I'll look at these maps really quickly with you so you can see everything um, in just one big view here. So, And then this is the nighttime map. We can really zoom in and use some of that electrical questions. Um, I didn't really do that here, but um, we can definitely study that carefully um, because the electrical wires don't always show us everything. And you can see right in here uh, in particular, uh, I noticed on the uh, soil maps, uh, there's a very vital uh, kind of drainage system that goes, gets this polluted. And that's kind of, we don't want to see the same thing that happened in Thailand happen right here in Sulawesi. So um, anyway, uh, I'll qu quickly go through these again, um, just so you can see, I'll zoom out, you can see the forestry, um, basically some of the keys here. Uh, I'll just move this around a little bit so you can see. And really don't underestimate how important these deep sea islands are. Um, it's really our last hope. And what we notice on the marine fishery map is that they're actually, look at what they've done out here. They're actually fishing way out here. And if you look at this, this is scraping the ocean. So all these tracks here, they've actually scraped the ocean um, for fish and they're actually getting everything out. So it's not only, not only are they, there's like they're fishing out here all the time. So that, that's what these marks are, as basically fish tracks. So the Marshall Islands, you can see um, there are all these fishing boats out there that we really got to watch out for. Um, and I really hope I haven't, um, you know, it, there's just take a break, take a walk, think about all this details. Um, obviously, um, what is going to happen here is that you're going to learn something awesome about the planet um, way beyond what I have ever learned. Um, and it's really going to change everything. So um, there's just so many details um, in this whole, uh, I guess, triangular region here um, that are connected into deep space. Uh, and it's so exciting um, just to work with everybody around the world on understanding this. So this is going to save uh, our planet. You know, this kind of work that we're doing right now tonight um, is going to save the fish, um, really the entire fishing industry. Uh, everything about the ocean is really going to depend this is the only planet I mean there's nothing else every this is I mean it's basically the Caribbean and then this area right and this is going to save the entire planet so uh, if we do this right uh, and we are wise here um, we're going to have a planet that's awesome hopefully forever so that's what we want to do and this is all we got so we're starting to populate this in an unbelievable way and we deforested almost everything so we, we have to be careful about that um, and realize where the problem started and how important the forestry industry is particularly in the Philippines and Indonesia here uh, and try to see what we can do to reforest things in Sumatra for example um, and look at what's happening in Papua New Guinea so it's just very scary um, so um, anyway thank you so much um, I'll leave it with uh, those pictures here, uh, and uh, I really hope, uh, try to contact me, let me know what you're working on, I'd be so thankful to hear from anybody that's working on this stuff, uh, particularly about your spiritual ideas, and your ideas to help um, all the wildlife. Thank you so much. Um, so if you just did take your time to look at this with me tonight, or today, or whenever you're looking at this, we looked at a vast part of our planet. Um, this is the only planet we got, and you just have really done so much effort. I just wanted to thank you for looking at this with me, um, and just look at all these opportunities, you know, um, around the world uh, to make friends, uh, to talk with people, uh, to work with people. I've made friends in so many places, and I'm so grateful um, to see uh, what they're doing uh, in all these countries around the world. Um, and just have an opportunity to help even a tiny bit and it could be so awesome just helping out so i'm so thankful and i really hope this helps you out a lot thank you so much see you later